All right, Matt Franco. Good to see you again. Great to see it's, you. As we say, it's been a while since we've uh, had a chance to see each other in person. So how are you doing? How have you been holding up? I'm holding up well. I'm excited to be here for this. I even put my cards down just now, just I so I can that. really I... focus on this conversation. <laughs> do you carry cards with you all the time? Lately. Yeah? Lately I do. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you find that people are asking you to do something when you're out and, you know, well, I don't in public? Well, I don't see people anymore. <laughs> yeah, but in, in a typical environment, like um, they see a magician, make a coin disappear. I right? guess there's that stereotype. It doesn't happen to me uh, too, too much. I used to, I went through a whole phase where I didn't carry cards at all. And I recently, at some point between four years ago and now, started like getting back into wanting to have them on me all the time to practice. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of a, I've gone in and out of phases with it. Yeah. Johnny Thompson inspired me to get back into close-up magic. So that's yeah. a big part. The first time I talked to you, he was there. I remember yeah, that. I remember in that this over... theater. Yes. But it looked very different. It was a lot different. Yeah. 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 And you guys were doing card stuff. Yes. And, uh, yes yeah, I we loved were. him. I actually remember, I'm not just weird what you remember. I valeted right behind him that day. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> Full did it. We both got out of the car. I was like, hey. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good time. It was, it's, it's interesting when you're a ma magician, I would think that, you know, if you're a singer or a guitarist, you know, and you're walking around in regular life, people don't just come up and say, hey, sing a song or hey play something yeah <laughs> a magician I think, you guys are yeah i think comedians on. get it too right oh be yeah. funny tell a joke mm -hmm. and uh i think i used to like shy away from that and, and now I, I think i wouldn't mind now mm. i'm like i have so much stuff i'm working on that i haven't been able to show anybody like if i could sneak a trick and i will yeah Siegfried <laughs> always has that thing he does with the coin yeah you know yeah. he does that all the time mm -hmm. you know? it, mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm back in that phase where i where i would do the same thing back to the back to the basics huh? yeah i guess so so you're reopening here planning to on the, the 17th right? 17th yeah. of december 27 days from now all right mm -hmm. how did you decide that date uh, well, it's just conversations with Caesars and our team and just kind of trying to figure out, okay, how much time do we need to uh, reinvent, magic reinvent it? Because mm -hmm. that is part of what Re we're doing. Reinvent it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we decide based on the timeline on what we can do and, and what feels right. Is, uh, is the show going to have any holiday theme in it? Because they are a week of... Uh, from Christmas, as it as it turns out, I've, I've never actually done that. So we're always open during around Christmas time, and I have ideas for things to do with Christmas the Christmas themes, and and just never have. You just wear an ugly sweater and have that be the <laughs> not the absolutely holiday. Here, this is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> but we've talked a little bit about uh, you, you advancing the show and changing it up a little bit. Yes. Uh, what can you tell people about what Magic Reinvented's relaunch is going to look like? From yeah. The, audience? The, the hope is in terms of because I know I mentioned to you when we chatted before about production i mean updating on certain things so not only the magic but also uh music some scenery visual sort of things mm -hmm. uh let's see magic music lighting could be a big one but i read something in something that you wrote i think i read it today uh you wrote about donny osmond and yes you, and you quoted him and i thought it was a really great quote uh, he and I, not verbatim, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said something about how it's not about how much money you put into a production; it's the personality of the show. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, and I love Donnie, and he said yeah. such an inspiration. And I thought that was so cool. It's important not to get caught up in all the bells and whistles, right? It's mm -hmm. great, and you have to have that quality there. But it's always good to come back to what he said. He said, people don't walk out of the theater humming the lights. Humming the lights, isn't that a great quote? It's yeah. a fantastic mm -hmm. quote, and and. If you change it up a little bit, it applies to magic. Yeah, I get know? it. I get it. And you're a fan of those guys. I've seen you on, yeah. you're on stage with them near the end of the run, right? <laughs> yeah, you a couple you. of times. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yep. And I get what you're, why you would be gravitated, uh, why you, you would gravitate towards something like that because somebody like Osmond has done it, you know, all the way up the ladder from, you know, up close all the way up to the huge productions on Broadway, you mm -hmm. know, even mm -hmm. so. And you've had, you've had a lot of stuff around you before. Sure. And, uh, but I think it, it feels like you really respect the, the, um, the resonance that a headliner and an entertainer can, can get with an audience. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the production aspects are important too. It's just, it's just important not to get too caught up in those, right. Not to get too excited by those. Remember what the essence of this is about. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, the complaint that people have about uh, like nightclub and nightclub technology. You walk in there and they're just belching 
technology at you. It's like, wow. Yeah. But you walk out and like, what, what was that? <laughs> you do walk out humming the lights. <laughs> it's like, what, what, uh, yeah. What, yeah <laughs> With I'm, a hum I'm, in your I'm head. humming the CO2 cannons. <laughs> Everybody scream and I'm ducking. <laughs> Have you <laughs> done the, any of those in, before COVID? Were you getting involved in showing up to those things? At the clubs? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have to, you know, it's interesting though. It's a good question because it gives me a meter uh -huh. to see, you know, if you're doing a card trick, I'm really fixated on that. And then the, the, the couple nights later you go to Omnia and it's a whole different scale. It's Steve Aoki and all that. And it's a sure. whole different type of entertainment. Yeah. It's just different. You yeah. Know? It's just but like I, circus different. Yeah. There are a million things to watch at once as mm -hmm. opposed to sitting at absinthe and everything's focused in the middle. And right? it's your job to figure out and in your hands to figure out where the balance is between the wow stuff mm -hmm. and the, the, the softer moments, the quieter moments and the more one-on-one. -on -one For moments. sure. Yeah. Have you, do you think you've, over the five years you've been here at least, have, have found your sweet spot when it comes to balancing the two? Uh, I think I was in a, a pretty good swing of it. Uh, eight, nine months ago, <laughs> uh, I think we we honed it in and everything was really flowing and I just felt like I it was really in a good place. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested to see where I am with that balance. Are now. you nervous about being in front of an audience again? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm nervous sitting across from other human beings now. Not, not, mm -hmm. and, I, and I mean that in terms well, of like- I know our human beings are- <laughs> we're pretty we're different you know we're I like, actually, like a gang like a media gang <laughs> I, I mean, like the of, jets in terms of social skills <laughs> like that i just too. i'm so not uh, interacting with the people as often as i used to be so it just feels different to me and social norms are different right everything mm -hmm. we grew up doing shaking hands I, and I, I tend to be that type of person that, yeah that mm -hmm. uses my hands when i talk and i get in close and this and that and you know i have to adjust yeah and that goes for what you do how are you going to call someone on stage? Have you thought that through yet? How, yeah. The so we'll, for that? We, we've got a lot of plans in place for that sort of th for those sorts of things. And most of it's dictated by the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So most of it, there are parameters that need to be followed and we figure out ways to do that. But since we're 27 days away and have not been doing the onstage rehearsals yet, mm -hmm. right? And we have not had an audience in the room yet. I think there are going to be a lot of little things that's, oh, we got to figure out what to do with this part. Oh, we took this for granted that the marker got put over here and handed to this person. We can't do that anymore. So mm -hmm. I think there are going to be a lot of little things, but I think we've got the broad strokes uh, pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll, you'll, uh, when, when do you start the rehearsals or in the theater? I mean, that's a good question. I don't, uh, well, for example, we're doing little things here and there. Uh, we had a meeting here last weekend. There's another one here this weekend which is an exciting time to look at some stuff. But I wouldn't even call those rehearsals. I would call those planning. Okay. So there'll be about a week of rehearsal or so leading up to the 17th mm -hmm. in that range there, you know, and around the 10th. Right. You have uh, you haven't been totally silent in nine months. You've been online doing a lot of stuff. I've seen you on, on the digital platform doing, you know, <laughs> I get to see Matt kind of one-on-one. -on -one <laughs> yeah. One. Yeah. Did some magic virtually. Um, I got to, I think one of the first shows back on TV was America's Got Talent that actually taped... They weren't like, for example, uh, American Idol this past season, mm -hmm. their winner won at home. It was a right. virtual thing. Uh, Amer America's Got Talent was one of the first shows back, if not the first show to do it in person. I think you're right. And get mm -hmm. people back again. So I got to go back and, and do a spot there. Um, and it was just a different, uh, very different experience because uh, the set was so strict about following the guidelines. I saw very few people while I was there. It was a whole day, but usually it's like a homecoming for me. Yeah, I was, yeah, you're, you're, you're a champion. So, well, is, but, a, but I also made friends with a lot of the, mm -hmm. the folks, the wonderful people who work on the show, really the, from, from producers to stage hands to our scenic designers. I, I, I've worked with them for six years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done probably 15 performances on the show, Yeah, you know, so I've gotten to know a lot of them and I didn't really get to, to hang out in the same way, but I did get to do magic and I still had it. <laughs> Did you? It, it still worked. I still could do it. I didn't get nervous that's or helpful. anything. I was mm -hmm. able to to pull it off, and you know that's a high stress situation because it's live on TV. It's exactly. not just TV; it's live. You mm -hmm. know, so it's a whole different thing. You won it in uh, fifteen, right? Uh, I think it was the end of fourteen, and, technically. Uh, that season at the end of the year, and mm -hmm. then it was that pre preceded you coming to Las Vegas. Twenty six or twenty seven year old. Yeah, I was twenty. Yeah, yeah. The, so the, yeah, I was twenty six when I won. Twenty five at the audition, but I aged by the time we got to the finale. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you look back on that period, what goes to your mind? I mean, was it that that uh, dramatic? And uh, it had to be the the catalyst for you, to, you know, coming into Las Vegas. Totally. A, I mean, it was the the key point of your career. Right? Wow, I don't know how to even explain how I felt during that time. I mean, it really is just a surreal thing where it's really hard to like 
put into words. If I were to watch a clip of it, I would feel like it wasn't even me that I'm watching. Right. Because now it was six years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'd look back and it's just kind of like, wow, I, I, I can't believe this. Do you ever go back and watch your performances from that year or the moment you won? In cool. general? Mm -hmm. Like uh, from that show or in general? From, from, from the AGT, uh, the, the would, run of shows up to your victory. I would say I, I watch uh, performances of mine pretty seldomly in general. It's a little bit cringy for me to like mm -hmm. hear myself talk, uh, even watching clips of the show here, which I occasionally have to do. Or mm -hmm. often, I should say, have to do to improve things. Um, and I will very occasionally uh, need to go back to hear the music that I used in the background of the quarterfinals of this or that mm -hmm. and, and AGT. And it um, it gives me the feels because really? I feel like I'm not, it feels like I'm not watching me. I'm actually experiencing almost how people experience it I've heard home. entertainers refer to themselves in the third person when they talk about their own video. If yeah. You, if you look at them like a band member, yeah. If wow. you look at them on, yeah. See, that's a talent. I don't know if I, I, I wish I could do that. I can do that only now because it was a while ago. Mm -hmm. It's like watching a video of me performing uh, in elementary school, which I have, and, or, or, or at Jeff McBride's master class when I was 12. I have video footage of this. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I'm watching myself. So that's because it's so, the more distance you put in there, the more I can say, look at them. Yeah. You know, but, but if I performed a trick for you right now and then we watched it, you know, tomorrow, I really wouldn't want to watch it. <laughs> I really wouldn't want to watch it. Is it to the voice too? Do you have a, yes. a, a lot? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Um, you mentioned uh, Johnny Thompson. Yeah. The great Tom Sony. Yeah, yeah. Who else was, was instrumental in, in, in inspiring you to be in magic in, in the, yeah, originally? I, I, oh, well, I won't even say was, I will say is because a lot of it could still be uh, talked about in present tense, including Johnny, even though he's no longer with mm -hmm. us. Um, another one is I've already mentioned is Jeff McBride. Yeah. And still, mm -hmm. um, and the other, uh, now I'm only mentioning three here. Obviously there are more, uh, is a guy, Bill Malone, who is a corporate magician okay. out of Florida, originally from Chicago. I saw him on TV for the first time in 94. So I was in the single digits. I was about six or seven okay. years old at that mm -hmm. time, eight years old, whatever it was. Um, 94, I was born in 88. You guys listening, <laughs> your listeners are very Get smart. Get the calculators out, folks. They can do the math. Uh, <laughs> but I saw him and the way he handles sleight of hand and the way he handles people and his comedic skills. Um, and Bill's become a, a great friend over the past few years. And uh, wow, I mean, hmm. to see his hands work now, he's better than he was watching him on TV 25 years ago. He's that much better. And when I watch his hands work, I just have no choice but to say, wow, he's like a thousand times better than me. And that's inspiring. I love wow. that. And you know what I love too? He's in his sixties and he considers himself still a student. And I want to be that way. You pick guys who are technically and, and probably in the culture, he enormously respected, but maybe aren't on the strip marquees. That's you know? true. Yeah. That's true. Although Lance Burton would be mm -hmm. an exception to that. Um, did I skip Lance Burton? Because well, yeah, because we, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Because we had Johnny Thompson, so mm -hmm. four, four. But of course, David Copperfield and and many many others. I mean, and Penn and Teller. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the mm -hmm. list goes on and on, including some of those names you would see on the marquee. But um, yeah, you were on Penn's uh, podcast. Yeah, as were you. Uh -huh, I was on right after you. There you uh, go. That's why I, was, I was listening to the stretch of shows before I got on, and I listened to yours, and I, I was struck by how um, how how informal the conversation was about magic and how really comfortable it was. I sure. I was really impressed by that. Well, the sort mutual of... respect that you guys had for each other, you know? Oh, I love that. Yeah, no, there's a, a shorthand, I guess, that mm -hmm. we use because there's a lingo. Yeah, yeah. Dialect. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little yeah. jargony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the jargon. That's and a lot of pen too. When you're interviewed by pen, yeah, there's a lot of pen in the interview. There's I think that's lot, typical. The questions, right? Are, <laughs> I was sitting there and I was like, I can't remember where this question started. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so were, interesting to listen to. We're like, where am I being asked a question? Or well, we just, look, <laughs> it, it, if he were in the room now, there would be a lot of pen too, and I think he'd be okay with us saying that. It's, uh, yeah, I know. No, that's just by design. Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a, he's a big uh, presence, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. But he's. A, I know that they. The fact that you were on is it was pretty cool. Oh know, yeah, it was, it was great. It was great to do. I, you know, I've since then. I started a podcast recently. Did you, you know have, that? Yeah, I did write about this. Yeah. Did, oh, just yeah. so this was just recently. So yeah, in the past, uh, we were only twenty episodes in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember wanna, I wrote it about it, about it at the beginning, and I completely forgot about it. I don't want to put any pressure uh, on the air. I'll be but on I mean, the show. Maybe we could have someone <laughs> named John Katz. You come just on. have your people call my people. <laughs> your people call the me, and I'll do it. Hey, it's easy. Hey, it's recorded. I'll show up in a mask. He, he just said I'll do it. I'll do. You it. heard it. I'll show up. I'll you have, heard it. I'll have my cards. 
I'll bring my my playing cards. Okay, in. what are you gonna do with those? <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to learn a, a card trick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a source. That I'll take you up on. You'll be the one to teach me a card trick. I've never had anybody teach me. I've always thought of uh, like having Siegfried teach me the coin thing. I just haven't gotten. I'd know, love gotten to. to that I'd point. love to. Because it's interesting. Because you and you also have mu music in you. A little bit. A little bit not, as you know, it's not you know just a hobby. You, just, not a you gift. broke a guitar string at my birthday party, so that makes you a ma magician. It sounded like it broke. <laughs> didn't it actually break? No, no. I didn't break a string. This is string. getting so twisted. <laughs> Three years ago, I think you came on stage with Marino and Jason Tanzer I, and I, Chris I, Phillips and all those guys. Clint Holmes. I blame. Clint was up there. I, Travis Clower was on stage, and you were playing guitar. I blame uh, Marino. Frank, Frank Marino for yeah. this. No, I didn't break any strings. Okay. I promise you that, but it certainly, playing, huh? it may have sounded like I did at one point. I was playing the keyboards. Is that a little right? bit with Frankie. <laughs> that was the lineup. This is the super group <laughs> quotes. <laughs> Franco on guitar. Uh, who is it? David Ramirez on drums, I think. Uh, Tony Moreno maybe on bass. Frankie's brother, Frankie. Travis Clore, Jason Tanzer was up there for a, a minute or two. I was mm -hmm. helping with the keyboard. I see it. Well, do you get nervous to do that or no? That was crazy. No, no, because I'm not a trained uh, musician. So. so you don't get nervous? No. All the not more in reason. that situation. See, no. I was very... Because nobody expects anything out of me. No, I mean, no, no, nor me. But I mean, I was very... But you got goaded into playing. I know Frankie yeah, really, really goaded And I wasn't... Really, like, if I had, like, maybe practiced earlier that day and, like, warmed up a little, you know, if I knew I was doing it, I could have gone in a little prepared. I don't know how he knew. How did he know that you played guitar? Because I didn't even out, know that when you were there. Because we hung out backstage either here or maybe when he was at Planet Hollywood. Okay, and uh, we were fussing okay. around, so that's how he knew. Uh, he, so he, he found it. Drag me into it. It was it was great. But, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna have you teach me a card trick. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, I'm I'm starting to learn new things. I'm having uh, uh, Bucky Heard uh, give me voice lessons. By the way, is that right? I'm doing, doing, taking voice lessons. Very cool. So while you're playing the guitar, mm -hmm. I'll sing. I would actually do this. We'll get a band together. <laughs> so we got two people. Can we can we uh, play here at the the Matt Franco Theater? I think that's the only place that would have us. <laughs> Do you know anybody? It's booked. At the Matt Franco Theater would make that happen. <laughs> hey, I was here when they renamed that place. So I have an inside too. There I come there. There you, you go. You know what I remember about uh, the Matt Franco Theater when they named it? Is uh, one of the, the letters was slightly off. That's all I remember too. <laughs> that's all I remember. This, we had this photo of you. It was uh, the T, I think. <laughs> straightening out your own sign you know at the funny. time i was probably really stressed about that but if you think back it's pretty silly that's a first world problem Does yeah right, straighten out your own right. <laughs> i couldn't straighten out the sign <laughs> that's where i learned you're from uh, another thing i learned that day was that you're from uh, johnstown rhode island johnston right? johnston johnson rhode island yes, yes. okay not to be confused with johnstown pennsylvania johnston yes sir. rhode island okay what kind of a town is johnston rhode it's island? it's uh it's small Rhode Island is small. Mm -hmm. You've been to Rhode Island? I've been to Providence. Okay. I covered a, a basketball game at Providence, Rhode Island. Do you know uh, how long Seaport. it would do you know how long it would take you to drive, you know, across the entire state the long way? Let me think about this. The long way, okay. Well, it would take I mean, I six hours. I don't mean the longest route. I just mean like, you know like a, a sensible route. It's longer than it is wide. I would say um seven hours, six, seven hours. Rhode Island is one hour. One hour? Rhode Island is very, very small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was using the distance between Las Vegas and Reno. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. No it's, way. Really? It is super Rhode tiny. Rhode Island's the kind of, is the place where people uh, measure size. It's like, it's the, it's half the size of Rhode Island. Uh, that's why. This yeah, is why. That's why. Because it's, it's something that people are supposed to be able to relate to. Anything over 20 minutes is a long drive. I kid you not. You can't get someone to come 20 minutes. In the whole state. Yes, yes, okay. yes. This is an entire state. It I is can't a relate state, to that. Yeah. So I guess I've lived pretty, in big states. Johnson's pretty small. I probably mm -hmm. graduated high school with uh, roughly, give or take, 150 students in my okay. class. So not not huge. Johnston High School? Yeah, Johnston. Okay. You're Public. the pride of Johnston High School. Then. Yeah, yeah Panther be. Pride. Panthers? Okay. Yeah, Johnston Panthers. And you are the prince of the entire uh, alumni. I don't know about that. <laughs> is there any, any other famous people come out of that? Of course. There's one in particular that you know that has a presence here in Las Vegas, Johnston mm. High School as well. In Las Vegas? In Las Vegas, uh, yeah. Yep. Hold and, on uh, here. We even touched on his line of work earlier in the conversation. Hold on here. There's, okay, there's another, is, he's an entertainer-ish. Yes, sir. Okay, God, I can, I'm, I'm losing the name now. He's uh, always at Santa Fe. We're, we're in the DJ realm. 
Pauly D. Pauly D is from your? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was Pauly D is from Johnston. Johnston High School as well. Of Pauly course, he's, he's not DJ at the same Pauly time. D. He's older than I am, but yeah. You're still the pride. Of... <laughs> Come with another one. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, John, really? Pauly D? Yeah, he's from Johnston specifically. They're yeah. hanging out at Lake Las Vegas right now. There you, you know, go. That, oh, that cast. Yeah. Is that right? Are they yeah. doing another thing yeah, over there? A... Usually they're hanging out here. They filmed a lot at Link. I saw him at the airport leaving New York one time. I there you go. I sat down and we were to. And we're, we're flying out of uh, JFK to back to Las Vegas. And I sat down and I didn't know I was sitting next to Pauly D. There you go. He sat there, was re re reading a magazine. And all of a sudden I turned around and there's Pauly D. And he had the glasses on, the whole Pauly D. Thing. The whole the whole thing. The second Pride of Johnston. Rhode That's Island, right. Right next. I'm glad, I'm glad you put me in first. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm so happy. Do you, are you still in contact with him? Do you guys? I never knew him actually. Um, he's my brother's age. So they know him. But okay. um, I never went to school at the same time. He's probably 10 years older than me. Yeah. Something yeah, like he's that. He's in his forties, early forties for sure. Yeah. So, but you guys don't. You haven't talked to him about, about this. You you don't know him. No, I don't know him personally at we all. We gotta get this together. I we're think my brother together. used to ride bikes with him or something. Okay. Yeah, we gotta get you together. There's another person who is who plays harmonica in Las Vegas. Who's from your hometown? Oh, I know Joe. Yeah. Joey. Joe. Yeah. Joe. Joe. Joey. You call him Joey. Joe. I'll call him Joe. Yeah. <laughs> we used to play when we were in, when we were kids in high school and stuff. We'd play like blues traveler songs and he'd play the blues harp and he's, he's awesome. great. Yeah. yeah he's great a, harmonica a very player. skillful drummer yeah. too. I don't know if you've heard him drum. No, he'd hop on stage with Santa Fe every once in a while. He's, Joe, uh, what's his last name? Uh, Kalitri. Kalitri. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yep, yep. There you go, Joe. Plug for you. <laughs> how you doing, buddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big rock and roll fan. Um, but at that point when you're in high school, were you a, a magician in, in those days? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. For elementary school. I actually have footage of like myself performing magic in elementary school. It's pretty wild. Like in the classroom. Really? Like a whole show for the class. Yeah, your first audience was? No. Was no, that's the funniest thing too. It's like, it wasn't my first, you know? Okay. Um, I had been, uh, the, the, not with the footage I have, the footage I have, I'm probably, you know, eight or nine or 10 years old. So there were, you know, I started when I was four or five doing little shows in my basement for okay. friends and neighbors that we'd come Was this a classic case where you got a magic kit and uh, mastered it or did, was somebody, yeah, did somebody it, take you under their wing? Or? It was actually, no, no, there was no wing. There were no <laughs> wings to be had. <laughs> And a very small magic community, obviously, in Rhode Island. Obviously, I didn't have those connections at that age. Um, <laughs> so, it, was a, it wasn't actually a, a, a kit. I always say that it was just because it's easier to convey. But since you're asking, it was actually just a trick. It was mm -hmm. one trick. And it was the ball and vase, a little red ball that vanishes from inside of a blue vase. Okay. Yeah. You flip it in? You do not you... flip it in. Okay. It's just like a, a vanish. It, it goes inside of a little blue vase. It's made of plastic and it vanishes. Okay. And that was my first that I recall. And actually, there were two more that I did in show Are you going to return that to, to the uh, re you know, reinvented? I couldn't consider it because <laughs> Penn and Teller already did. They actually do the ball and vase. It's a very classic trick and they do it in a Penn and Teller way. And they've uh, put it in their show at some point in the past couple of years. Oh. So they, they beat me to they it. They copped your first trick. Well, or you copped the trick originally. Many magicians I first shouldn't trick. say copped, boy. No copped. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's one thing I should know better. <laughs> copped. <laughs> I invented it. There, yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing you at McBride's show one time. That's I made a joke it, about. Uh, was it Wonderground? Yeah. Yeah. And I went up and you were sitting across the room and I did my this thing. There you go. I said, and you I think you did it too, or you laughed at it. I said, hey, hey, it's mine. Uh, I invented it. And every time somebody does it, I get 25 cents. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I got a couple of quarters. You'll be okay. No, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did do it twice. But yeah, you mentioned Jeff. He had he was doing Wonderground up until uh, yeah. up the, the closing. I wonder how some of these people are just doing right now. Yeah, well, Jeff know? teaches virtually. He's a magic teacher and mm -hmm. he teaches, you know, he's brought his classes in his school online. I think a lot of magic seems to be a medium that works uh, through virtual shows more mm -hmm. so than maybe some other art forms. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly seems like it would work more than stand-up, although I'm sure that's been done too. But magic close magicians seem to be... What's that? Up close magic does to me. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. works, you mean? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, for me, it's still not the same. I, I think as long as you differentiate it, as long as you know it's apples and oranges from live performance, you can, you can do it and you can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you ever expect it to be the same thing... I think that's where you're going to say, oh, this just isn't working right. for yourself if you're trying to do it. In, in the return, we thought some headliners uh, or a couple have uh, have invited 
their colleagues up on stage, you know, to, to do a couple of minutes, not even in their own genre, whatever they, whatever they do, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Toby Allen from human nature joined Piff to do a dance. I saw moment. your clip of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know he was coming. I didn't know he just, just showed up. Sure. So yeah. Um, is that something you're going to entertain? Get, get somebody maybe like a, like a Jeff or somebody from a, another show to come up and do a couple of minutes with you? Or, I, or I, would, I, I would love to do something like that. You know, I never do. And it's mostly because I don't want to put people out, honestly. Hmm. It's just the uh, the idea of saying, hey, do you want to come up and do that? But if someone th was looking for the stage time, I would absolutely do that. Have Donnie come up. I would absolutely mm -hmm. do that. And you know what? I would feel bad asking, even though, you know, really? obviously he's cool with it and does it. And, you know, mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I would just feel bad asking, right? He He's John, he's Donnie, the, the legend. So if he asked me to do something, I'm, I'm honored to do it. But like yeah. for me to now say, oh... Return that I just feel bad. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we've we've Is that talked. Weird? <laughs> I I don't know. Okay. It depends on the individual. You know, I don't know how the ask goes right now and you know, in this climate. Yeah. You know, how you get, you know, somebody to Especially after eight or nine months. I don't even have the social skills to, you know, order an orange juice from the cafe downstairs. You do it. I think you think you do it maybe on on uh, social media, just do a clip of yourself asking. <laughs> What do you mean? Take like a recording video. A of virtual request. Yeah. Oh, God. Then you don't have to feel bad. You just kick it out. It's like, well, <laughs> just send it out into the ether. Then it's recorded <laughs> and it lives forever. Anybody oh. who wants to be in Frank, Matt Franco, re reimagined, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> that includes Donnie Haas <laughs> and Jeff McBride. There you go. Anybody. Yeah. <laughs> It could work. You never know. It could. it could be the open ask starring Matt. Franklin. The open ask. The open ask. We have a new show title. The open ask. There Remember that we're all about ideas <laughs> <laughs> here at Cat Central. We've had we've talked over the over the course of time, Matt, about how come uh, and why it is that magic works so well in Las Vegas. Okay. And uh, you know, I, I return to that now because we're going to have some magic coming back, and it's going to be very important in the reopening of Las Vegas over the next period of time. How do you explain, uh, you know, being now a something of a veteran strip headliner, the the lure of magic and magic productions in our city? Magic, uh, in my case anyway, I think it gives people something where they don't have all the answers to it, which is interesting in a world where everything's Googleable. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There are things you can come and see in my show that you, you can't just, believe it or not, believe it or not, the internet won't have the answers. That is pretty incredible considering all the information out there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like maybe the mystery aspect, I guess mystery is the one thing that magic can do that it has, that other art forms don't or other crafts mm -hmm. don't. Right. So mm -hmm. like, I love making people laugh and having fun with people and giving them a good experience. But at the end of the day, what separates what I'm doing from a comedy show or a music show or anything else that's outside of magic is that mystery aspect. Right. So I, I've, that, that's what I think maybe is part of what set, sets magic apart, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard to come up with things that other variety type shows or shows of any kind wouldn't be able to deliver uh, than each other. But magic seems to have this one thing that no one else has. And it's interesting because there's still just the set number of things that you can do in magic it has never really changed over the years i mean the the the, the framework of it right the, yes and no uh i would say there's a limited no there are a limited number of keys on the keyboard but the way you arrange those hmm. always writes a new song mm -hmm. um you could it's interesting because in magic you could come to my show and and let's let's say right now i showed you a card trick and then tomorrow uh someone shows you a card trick you say oh it was, a, it was another card trick but not really because if you go see um i don't know keith urban and he's playing mm -hmm. the guitar you don't go to the next concert and go oh he has that same instrument it must be the same thing right two mm -hmm. people can use one prop in in very different ways and for different types of effects yeah i like right. the musical instrument comparison like the piano especially yeah, you got people who play it classically you got boogie woogie and you got little richard and you know tchaikovsky and mozart and elton john yeah <laughs> all and playing the I mean, same instrument there are realms in in card stuff that i don't even touch like cardistry and things like that that the kids are doing now that's mm -hmm. unbelievable hmm. and uh if i, I were if that I, is if, it's cardistry. It, cardistry it's just beautiful visual flourishes with playing cards mm -hmm. and i mean i i do some flourishes but nothing like the stuff i mean if i were a kid right now growing up with it i think that's part of what i would be doing right um but i mean that's a whole nother realm just using the same prop 
And it's, it would totally, there's no chance you're going to see one of those kids and then see what I do and think it's comparable. It's just two different things. And they're both using the same instrument. Yeah. Right. And they're creating art pieces with the, with the 52 card. Yeah. Standard very deck. skillful, amazing, beautiful. They're isolating the cards in different ways and, and just their 10 fingers or their elbows. And they'll, they're, it's, it's more funny. like juggling. Yeah. It's, it's really okay. quite amazing. And, and some of those incorporate magic into them. Yeah. So it's well, it's cool. funny that we, you know, at least in my generation, you, you, you tend to say, oh, these kids with their TikTok and all this social media, I can't identify with it. It's so impersonal, but that you're using that to convey real art. You yeah. Know, as a, you know. Yeah. Tradition. That's, that's, yeah, that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, uh, you got married a couple years ago. Yeah. Like one year, I guess was August it? was one year. Okay. Yeah. But we've been together for 10. Yeah. How's that going? How's Fantastic. It, how's it? Tea? You call her? Yeah, yeah, Tatiana? yeah. yeah. People, a lot of people do actually, yeah. but it's Tiana, but a lot Tiana. of people do call her T. T, the T. Yeah, I sat next to her at the, yeah. where were we? At the Bronx Wanderers show, I think? Uh, yeah, or, I think yeah. so. Um, but yeah, my, my parents even call her T. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, as do I many times. <laughs> just what I remember. She says, call me T. Yeah, she uh, she's happy that I'm meditating. She says I'm more pleasant, so that's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's talk about the meditation. That's right. I forgot about the meditation. You're ahead of the curve on the meditation. Uh, yeah, how's that? going it's 200 and today so I, I checked today today is 217 217 today is 217 of consecutive days but i only do you know 20 minutes mm -hmm. uh, a, a, per day yeah and this was to why did you start getting into it in the first place wow that's a good question i, I i'm not exactly sure why i started i i have a couple of people that i know that have sort of um pushed it I, i've had people that, that have pushed it on me on and off since as, as, for the past six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I never really got into it. And then the Headspace app, I figured, let me give it a shot. Tried it, liked it. Didn't stay consistent with it initially, but still kind of liked it. And then with the pandemic, it allowed me the ability to wake up and force myself to do it. I just didn't have other things pulling me in different directions. Right. And now I'm hopeful that I'll be able to continue. Yeah. Now that you're now that I do have, the now that I am life. being pulled in a variety of directions. I've just, you know, I've tried it and I've tried it in different environments. Like I can never get my brain to stop. I mean, yeah. or, or to control where, the, where it's going. I think right? that's what it helps for me anyway. And it yeah. gives your mind space to think a little bit. I don't mm -hmm. know. The, Tiana, Tiana is happy I'm doing it. She doesn't do it, but she does yoga and things like that. But, um, you know, she's wonderful to be around. So I try to, I'm trying to be equally as wonderful, but it's hard. <laughs> she's hard to, to beat. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I, I'm interested to see if that can carry through now that you're everything's as you said changing and. Think about different. it. Even if it's just five minutes or ten, I should be able to squeeze that in. And there have been times yeah. when I've been down to the wire, and it's been like you know, twenty minutes before midnight, but I still got it in for the yeah. day. Or you could do it while you're driving. I'm not so sure. Probably not. With the eyes shut. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> don't try. That. That's why I don't teach meditation or driving. <laughs> or, or guitar <laughs> what else what else you've uh um we we were talking about your friend uh, is it joe esposito yeah, yeah yeah uh tell me about that friendship and how you got to know him he's a, a recording artist uh, yeah grammy nominated the guy's grammy. amazing mm -hmm. uh joe esposito he wrote for donna summer that's right uh heaven knows he actually sang on that track as well uh he you know it's kind of a duet and mm -hmm. he's the male voice and uh, he had songs in a lot of movies, uh, Shape of Water, and, yeah. and uh, uh, Karate Kid is is was the reason I knew him because he had mm -hmm. "You're the Best" around, and I tracked him down. I must have. I, I'm the type of person who will look for live versions of songs that I like. Mm -hmm. So I literally was doing this yesterday. I was looking up "Eye of the Tiger." live okay. versions of the original singer singing it because Survivor has had a yeah, rotating cast. Of course. I think yeah. it's Dave Pickler was the guy who actually sang Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. And Robin I was able Macaulay from Rock Bolt sang with him for, for a while too. With, with, uh, Survivor. with Survivor, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I had looked for You're the Best Around live for many years and never found a live version. And then at one point here in Vegas, I, I gave it another shot. Couldn't find him. Where, where is this Joe Esposito? And I maybe Wikipedia and found it said he performed with a group called cool change at rampart there we go and i found some clips of him performing some covers and things on on youtube and it sounded like the voice was still there mm -hmm. and i was like i gotta go stop by the rampart and just say hello uh -huh. and i did <laughs> and i introduced myself and said hello and uh we became fast friends 
and he agreed to let me play guitar with him while he sang You're the Best Around, which is now the only live version that exists mm -hmm. on the internet, which is pretty neat. Very cool. And uh, yeah, and we've kept in touch for the past, I guess it's maybe uh, three years now or so. And uh, yeah, we chat all the time. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah. we chat all the time. And he's just uh, a great person, a New Yorker, an East mm -hmm. Coast vibe. And uh, he's awesome. Yeah, when things get get recalibrated, I'm going to go out there and, and catch him. I haven't done that yet. You the, saw him play with another group though, right? He was with, um, oh gee, was he jamming with the Bronx guys? No, it was Fat City. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was at the Copa Room. There you go. Santa Fe and the Fat City Horns. That's where I saw him. Yeah, yes, and you said, you, I mean, you you mm -hmm. heard his voice, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's oh, got those it. Those guys were thrilled that he came up on stage with them, too. I think I, I think I did record that. I'll yeah, to, I think he said it. Yeah, I think he might have sent it to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's but, right. Um, so great. Great old Vegas uh, Vegas vibe. Yeah, um, so yeah, true. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I can't wait, and I know you can either, for things to get back to normal here. Yeah. Uh, this is a, you know, your show is going to be part of it, and... Um, yeah, on uh, December 17th, we'll be there. We're going to check it out. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, brace yourself. It will be a, uh, you know, it's I'm coming off nine months of not knowing how to do this stuff. So, I'm going to try my best. I'm excited you're going to come. It's moral support. I appreciate the moral support. <laughs> Just don't call on me. I will. Okay? I, <laughs> well, I mean, everyone's going to be socially distanced. We're going to have, what, four people out there? So, I only have a few choices. You got to come up at some point. Well, See, this, when you sell it that way. So, I'll... you want me to call on Donny Osmond. You want me to bring up Penn. You want me to bring up uh, Jeff McBride, but I can't bring up you. All right. If you get all three of them... <laughs> I'll go up. <laughs> if you try to get all three of them, that's all you have to do is make the attempt. If I'm in the theater, I'm fair game. All right. Okay. You heard it here. He agreed to come. He agreed to come on my podcast and he agreed to come on my stage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we're going to form a band. I'm in deep with this Franco empire. And now. learning a card trick. This and is, learning a card you're trick. getting more than you're bargaining for here. Jesus, this is an expensive trip down here. Um, <laughs> all right, Matt. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for spending time with me. Thanks for uh, all the chats we've had over over the years and uh, and uh, looking forward to the future thank you my friend appreciate you uh coming in and chatting here right on thanks thank you